Steve Moran here with Senior Living Foresight, and today I am talking to Scott Stewart with Capital Seniors Housing, not the same thing as Capital Senior Living. And did I get that right, Scott? I got to stop and ask. Did I do it right this time? Nailed it. Huh? I did. Okay, good. Because otherwise I'd have to do a retake and you'd never know. And with Jason <laughs> Zuccari with Hamilton Insurance. And so what I want to do is I want to spend just a few minutes talking about uh, how the risk insurance marketplace has been impacted by, by the, the COVID pandemic. And I've seen some indications that um, it's making insurance harder to get. Somebody posted that they're actually seeing policies being canceled or those kinds of things. And so um, I, maybe we'll start with you on this question, Jason, and then Scott as an owner, uh, operator of buildings, I'd love to hear your perspective on, you know, what you're thinking about and what you're worried about. So Jason. Sure. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having us this morning. Um, you know, give you a little overview. I think the insurance market has been definitely challenging as many things have been this year. Um, prior to COVID, we saw uh, rates increasing just because on so many fronts from the property side, there's been wildfires, storms, flooding that drove that property up. Um, and then we've seen on the liability side, uh, plaintiffs, attorneys, um, you know, within the senior space has, has gone up dramatically. And what that's done is driven, um, you know, claims up, which obviously raises premiums up. And so COVID really expedited this. Um, to your point about the cancellations, I haven't seen many cancellations. I've seen many of the insurance carriers. Um, I think, you know, two years ago, we had 30 insurance carriers to go to. Now, I think there's around 10 or 12. So there are um, many carriers that are being much more selective on who they're writing. They're doing much more due diligence and underwriting on who the operator is, what their experience has been. And they've, you know, for something and Scott could probably talk about this before is many um, operators, owners on the assisted side look to as insurance as a commodity for so long. And now as the rates uh, have been increasing, um, it's become something that people have been focusing a lot more on. So I haven't um, seen the cancellations. I have seen the insurance carriers um, putting moratoriums on, um, particularly on new business uh, on renewals. So Scott, what are you seeing? And maybe the other question I'd like you to address for just a minute is, are you doing new or different things to mitigate risk to you know, both protect yourself and to keep your rates down? Uh, first off, thanks for having me, uh, Steve. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you, Jason. Um, we are uh, always keeping an eye on it. It's a big line item in, uh, in all of our P&Ls and, and it's going in the wrong direction. Um, Unfortunately, but um, you know we've got, uh, we've got good partners, we've got good coverage, and it's being managed as best uh, as, as it can. Um, you know, our, our operators, we pick first class operators for a reason, and that is to um, that they that our residents get quality care, that our uh, that our caregivers are working in a good spot, and uh, and the byproduct of, of that is that we don't have a whole lot of incidents. Come across um, where we have to worry about um, uh, insurance claims, and of course it happens from time to time. But it's it's a blue moon type of uh, type of thing. Um, that said, you've got to carry insurance, and the topic here um, is one that uh, we do keep a close eye on because it is, as I mentioned, um, going up. Um, you know, I, I was relieved, or not relieved, but encouraged, I should say. That to see that uh, Capitol Hill right down the street here has been attentive uh, to it and that they <clears throat> put it in the state's um, uh, hands. Um, and a lot of states uh, related to COVID have been expressing a dispensation, if you will, uh, for operators that this pandemic is a, you know, the equivalent of a, a hundred year storm. And uh, therefore people are doing the best they can and, uh, and uh, that uh, claims related to the pandemic are going to be um, under some sort of protective so, uh, I'll be looking, looking for the details as we as we get into it. But I, I'm, I'm encouraged to see that that something is being addressed by the uh, by the states and by by Congress um, as a you know 
anomaly event uh, that we don't expect to see, you know, hopefully again in our, the rest of our last. Right. And, and Jason, are you seeing the same thing as your sort of sense that you're going to see at least in most states some um, some legislative protection uh, to protect senior communities from just getting hammered by lawsuits? Yeah, we're hoping to see some litigation relief. Um, you know, I can speak that Scott and I have um, participated in a, in a handful of calls with our uh, um you know, representatives in Congress to lobby on behalf of the industry to show um, kind of what is going on here in this space. I mean, some of the largest operators are on the calls with some senators and congressmen that we were on, and they, you know, were explaining that for the longest time, um, particularly in the senior housing assistance side, we've never asked for any kind of relief from the government. And this is one thing that we really need, uh, particular that it costs I think somebody stated three hundred dollars to follow uh, file a lawsuit, and you know fifty thousand dollars minimum just to defend yourself, even if it's completely frivolous. And so you can imagine um, some of these situations now, uh, particularly related to COVID, where the operator needs relief from uh, the government. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really—it's breathtaking, right? So we are at somewhere between four and 500 deaths in the U.S. Uh, since the start of COVID from COVID, right? And if you say 40% of those are people who are living in senior living of one type or another, uh, man, it may be, you know, that's mostly a nursing home number, so it may be above 50%. And you start thinking, you know, 200, 300,000 lawsuits and what the, the impact on, you know, not, not just the operators, but on the, uh, the access to senior living for people, it becomes really, really frightening. And I think it becomes a powerful case for uh, le legislative uh, relief on it. So, guys, thank you. I, I, I wish we could do, I, we'd probably do this for another 30 minutes. I'm going to give you sort of one last shot for one last statement, and then we've got to wrap up. So, Scott, uh, Scott anything more on this from you? Just like everything else, Steve, can't it's 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 great to have the uh, see the light at the uh, end of the tunnel, you know. But we're not uh, we're not safe until everybody's safe. So, the vaccine is uh, is something that we are is is in the headlines. It's in our daily you know uh, thoughts and meetings. And uh, the sooner we get this rollout going, that's going to lead to better days. What a great conversation. This huge, huge issue could have a huge impact on senior living, could have, have a huge impact on cost. Nick is actually holding a huddle where they're gonna be addressing this issue for an hour. It'll be part presentation, part small group discussion. I would really encourage you to join this huddle. Jason will actually be leading it, and I have dropped the link in the first comment below the video.